You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto de l'amour. You are a You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God 
You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto dell'amore. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of you are God. the face of love. I hold you in my heart. Good morning. Welcome to the Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. Holy, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. of angels wings I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place 
Let us pray. Loving Spirit, Mother, Father, everything God. We join together this morning in celebration, celebrating all that has been and all that will be. We celebrate and honor those who have served and those who have given their all. And we join together heart to heart this morning to celebrate also our oneness in you, our oneness that transcends time and space. We hold in prayer all those who have given their lives for the greater good, and we hold in prayer their families and loved ones. And we release this prayer and all the prayers of our hearts this morning into your loving presence, knowing that as we have asked, it is given. And so we give thanks. We give thanks, sweet spirit, for our growing awareness of your presence in every aspect of our lives. We invite your blessing on this service and on the celebrations of this Memorial Day weekend. We invite and give thanks for these blessings in the name and through the power of the living, loving, and indwelling Christ. And so it is. Amen.
Hooray, indeed, for the red, white, and blue, a symbol of our nation and a symbol of our collective vision of a life of liberty and wholeness. Resting into this now moment, allow the joy and exuberance of the music, the horns, the piccolos, the sweet harmony of voices, and the silence that follows. Let all of that enfold us in a sweet vibration of joy, faith, and vision. All the activity of the day, the picnics, the plannings, the schedules, and worrisome thoughts, and even prayer intentions are released into the echoes of harmony and joy. We just let them go for a moment, knowing that in God all prayer is answered. And time and schedules to keep are an illusion of the world, for in spirit there is only now, only this moment. And so we rest right now in that awareness allowing the breath to nourish our bodies and relax our muscles and energies that we might be lifted a little higher, not higher in the physical sense, but higher in our spiritual energy, higher in our own mind's eye. And so as we re rest, and as we release what holds us and tethers us to the physical, we are indeed lifted higher into a higher vibration, not an anxious vibration, but a peaceful vibration, one of light and harmony in which all the colors of the rainbow seem to gently wave before us, around us and through us like a flag, a flag of the Christ self waving light and wholeness throughout our being. Here we are safe and aware that we are whole, an expression of divine life giving birth to itself as us. And as we ponder that thought, that idea, the color red, a beautiful, translucent, and harmonious red waves before us and pushes gently through us and brings every cell in our body a sense of harmony, safety, and an evolving sense of wholeness, an enveloping sense of life, the essence of life that continues to wave in and through us at every moment, here and now and beyond time and space. Just allow the vibrant hue of red to wash over you and wave through you, restoring your cells, restoring your awareness and your expression of divine life. releasing the color red, the waves of light that gently sway and bend, bring forth brilliant hues of blue, indigo, royal blue, sky blue, and with them a deep sense of peace and harmony, a knowingness that all our needs are already supplied, that the one power, one presence we may call God is always at hand and always holding us in the arms of divine love. We know, we trust, and we know that what cannot be expressed in words, but only in the vibration of pure, unquestioning faith, a perception of knowingness, of all that is and all that will ever be needed is fully available in this now moment 
and in every moment. Gently releasing the blue light, the color white, which contains all color, refracting all color. All light in its various expressions and vibration fills our being, filling the space. Indeed, it is the space, not filling us, but holding us, vibrating as us, expressing as us, in a beautiful rainbow of color, light, and individual vibrations, ideas, visions, feelings, and hope, hopes and dreams, expressed individually and ultimately as community and as one. Light, existing, standing still yet moving at the speed of light, giving shape and form and absorbing it back again. It is warm, it is perfect. It is the essence of God vibrating into expression as us, and it is good, truly good. Let us seal this meditation, the remembrance of the light that waves through us with these simple words of gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. And now, as we return our attention to this time and this place, we are invited to sing and pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Oh, beauty. 
beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. Amen. God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees be cities gleam undimmed by human tears America America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea shining sea and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining Thank you, Nancy, for that beautiful rendition of America the Beautiful. Your voice is beautiful, and America is beautiful, isn't she? There is great beauty in the vision and life energy that our nation was built upon. And though she is a work in progress, her ultimate goal is of a divine nature that transcends time and space and even our individual human experience. A sort of life energy that reincarnates and recreates itself through the generations, through its trials and tribulations. Our country reincarnates itself. It needs to be reborn, rebrought into expression reincarnation. How many of you believe in reincarnation? It's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you again. I was asked recently if Unity believed in reincarnation. And it's an interesting question. It's, it's a simple question and somewhat complex at the same time because unity doesn't really have dogma or, uh, or doctrine. The closest that we have to that is our unity principles, which state the first one says that there is only one power, one presence, one activity, God the good, omnipotence, all power, everywhere present, the absolute life energy of the universe. And the second is that we, as the Christ, the Christ in us, are expressions of that one power, one presence, one activity, which is eternal, without beginning, without end. And so with those first two of the five unity principles, it leaves the idea of reincarnation wide open. And some people in unity do believe in reincarnation. And Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, believed in reincarnation. But he believed in it a slightly different way than many people believe in reincarnation today and slightly different than the Eastern philosophies, which said that, you know, that we reincarnate 
uh, to perhaps work out some kind of karma before we move into a greater experience. And many people today believe that same idea or another idea of how we may reincarnate to just something to experience something or to give something. And Charles believed slightly differently. He believed that we reincarnate into new bodies because we hadn't yet mastered the regeneration of the body that Jesus demonstrated. But regardless of whether you believe that in reincarnation at all, or whether you believe like uh, many people in unity do that there's a reason for this and that you're here to experience something, or you believe in uh, the idea of karma, or you don't believe in reincarnation at all, regardless of that. There's one thing that I can tell you, I firmly believe. And I believe that we are here for a purpose, an evolution of self, an evolution of com community, and an evolution of human consciousness. We are here to manifest the essence of life, and we are here to make a difference to make a difference. Memorial Day, this weekend, we honor Memorial Day, which honors those who have made a difference, who have made a difference in our lives and made a difference in our country and in the world. Those who have given this human experience, this incarnation for the, of life for the evolving good of the whole. And the holiday has its origins in the decorating of the graves of Union soldiers who were protecting a vision, a greater vision. And the holiday has evolved to honor all those who have given their lives for a common vision and purpose. And the symbols of Memorial Day now have expanded even beyond that. And they include all kinds of celebrations. I know you know what those are. They're picnics and yard work in the beginning of the summer season here in Michigan, um, barbecues, get togethers, all kinds of things. And each of those celebrations and the, the parades and the marking of graves and the flags, everything will reflect three colors red, white, and blue, the colors of our American flag. And so what is a flag? What is the purpose of a flag and its colors? It's a symbol. It's a visual reminder of the collective beliefs, the common history, and most importantly, a common future vision. The unity wings are a logo like a flag and they symbolize resurrection. The, the wings symbolize res resurrection and the circle in the center re uh, represents wholeness. And the newer logo, the one that uh, many of the churches have now adopted that kind of looks more like a flower opening, it represents transformation. And it represents it in a way that allows us to uh, understand that logo in our own spiritual path at whatever point we might be along that spiritual path. And the U.S. flag has great symbolism. It is fashioned after the Great Seal, which existed before the flag, and the colors are very symbolic. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. Blue vigilance, perseverance, and justice. And the white represents purity and innocence, like the innocence of a newborn baby, the innocence of a newborn country, a newborn vision. And the stars, the stars actually represent a new constellation. And constellations are a guide, a navigation, a navigation toward a new world, a new idea. And perhaps they represent an even higher vision 
than the vision of those who first caught sight of it and beyond their complete understanding. One in which all are equal. One in which we understand that the word man represents women, that re represents all people everywhere and represents the life energy even within our earth. And those, that circular form of those stars, which represented also the first 13 colonies, are in a circle representing an equality, an equal piece of the pie, an equal representation for each, a lot like King Arthur's round table. The colors of the flag have symbolism behind them. They are more than the pigments and dyes available or the fabric that might have been available at the time. Because they symbolize these ideas, but they also symbolize an underlying vibration or energy that is being called forth into substance. And that is a continuing operation. Max Lucher, uh, in his work, The Psychology of Color, suggests our choice of color corresponds to underlying aspects of consciousness or subconsciousness. His color test is still used today by psychologists and human relations departments, marketing firms, and interior designers. The flag colors were a reflection of where we were then, what we understood then, where we hoped to go and to be. Collectively and as individuals, pulled by a vision of freedom and liberty and equality, a vision of a new world. And the, that vision, those vibrations continue to draw us higher today with every evolution, with every reincarnation of our energies and our expression. Looking at the underlying energy of the colors of our flag, Let's look at some other colors and what they represent on an energetic level and a spiritual level, starting with the chakra system, the energy centers within the auric field. They are vibrations. The red is associated with the root chakra. Uh, that's associated with security, with safety, survival, and grounding. They represent being in a safe place and feeling safe. Blue is associated with the throat chakra and uh, it's associated with communication, with creativity, with healing, and with speaking truth, speaking words of truth. Indigo is another shade of blue and it's associated with the third eye, representing intuition, clairvoyance, and vision beyond what can be seen by the human eye. Spiral dynamics, which studies the evolution of human consciousness from the beginning of human history, also uses red and blue to signify energies. Red, again, in the spiral dynamics curve represents survival the early stages of human consciousness beginning about 10,000 years ago. And blue is an expanded consciousness on that, on that curve, expanding consciousness with purpose, nations, obedience, a beginning to work together. And that is about 5,000 years old, that the existence of that energy. And in our study of the 12 powers, a, a unity study, not doctrine, but a unity study um, that comes from our co-founder, Charles Fillmore. In those energy centers, red, located very much in the same area as that root chakra, red represents the power of life. And Physically, in the physical world, it represents procreation, life, and perhaps reincarnation, but procreation. And spiritualized, though, 
spiritualized under the direction of the Christ self. It represents divine life, that which goes beyond the physical world, that which goes beyond our physical experience. And the blue, blue represents the power of faith and the power of imagination. It represents creativity, potential, and knowingness, simply knowingness, that power of faith. Faith, according to Charles Fillmore, is the perceiving power of the mind, linked with the power to shape substance, the power to do the seemingly impossible. It is a magnetic power that draws unto us our heart's desire from the invisible spiritual substance. Faith, he says, is a deep inner knowing that that which is sought is already ours for the taking. When we consider the colors of our flag this way, we begin to see something perhaps a bit greater than the static symbol of a nation. Perhaps we begin to see it as a visual reminder of a place of safety, a place of faith, of creative energy, and the power to bring a vision into being, into substance. But the flag is not just blue and red, is it? It is also white. Six of the seven stripes are white. And white is not formally mentioned in the study of the 12 powers or the early studies of the chakra system. As a pigment, it is white is the lack of color, which gives it the symbol of purity. But in its spiritual or vibrational energy, it is all color. It symbolizes wholeness and oneness. Newer studies of the chakra system include those above the body, the uppermost chakra being white, representing the Godhead, the allness of color, the allness of light, or as what we would say, the Christ self. Now that gives the flag and the consciousness that shaped it a new dimension. Could it be, could it be that the founding fathers and mothers of this country were called to bring a vision bigger than themselves into fruition? One that embodied faith, equality, and oneness, the eternal nature of life and the wholeness and allness of God? I think those things called to their higher Christ self, to the white light, the energy and vibration of the Godhead, of the Christ self, bringing into substance what was beyond, at that point, their physical experience. In the Gospel of Matthew, we are shown the color white in the story of the transfiguration. It says in verses 1 through 2, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. And it was so overwhelming that the disciples asked if they should set up tents there. But Jesus said, no, we need to go back down the mountain. The keys in this story are first the symbolism of which disciples joined Christ at the mountaintop and how the powers they represent assist us in our quest for experiencing the light in its fullest. And they were Peter, who represents faith, and James and John, who represent wisdom and love. And so these three at the mountaintop in that higher expression of self, experience the Godhead, the Christ self. But the greater key is to not make camp there, to bring that light down the mountain into every, our everyday lives, into all aspects of being, into all our experiences. That's the meaning behind the fifth unity principles, which says that it is not enough to know the truth. We must live the truth we know. 
And so how do we accomplish this? How do we bring this into, uh, into manifestation? Do we create a flag of our own, a logo, a visual reminder? Uh, those might be helpful, but we do so. We bring these ideals, this energy into our everyday experience by affirming the divine life that transcends our individual experience. By speaking the truth, affirming and claiming the power of God, the life energy within us and holding us all through all our experiences. We, we bring it to fruition, visiting that high place in consciousness to connect with the allness and bring it into our everyday lives. We bring this into our everyday lives by responding and creating together as community from a, a vibration of creativity and communication rather than a vibration of fear, anxiety, and personal power. We do this by allowing the light to guide us as a constellation in the darkness in our quest for life, liberty, and happiness, and happiness. Reminds me of a story about Thelma Thompson, who was very unhappy. She had moved with her husband uh, to a US Army camp near the Mojave Desert in California during World War II, and it was miserable. It was hot. It was desert. The only shade was from cactuses and there was no breeze. It got to be 125 degrees and no one spoke English. She was lonely, miserable, and unhappy. And she, yet she had a powerful faith, but she had a powerful faith that she was living in hell rather than a faith that could help her to rise above that. And so in a deep state of self-pity, she wrote to her parents, and her father responded with just these two sentences. Two men looked out from prison bars. One saw the mud, the other saw the stars. The other saw the stars. Much changes when we change our perception of what we see. What is your perception when you look at our American flag? What is your perception when you look at the events in our world? What is your perception when you look at the events in your own life? Do you see pigments and dyes, the stuff of the, the uh, material world? Do you see trials and tribulations? Do you see obstacles? Or do you see an evolution? Do you see vibrations of possibility? Do you see a higher vision trying to evolve, trying to manifest? Do you see how a greater perception, seeing a higher vibration changes everything? Perception changes everything. It changes everything because it reminds you that you too are a work in progress, continually growing, evolving, and releasing what is not the truth of you, not the truth of the perfect vision of you. It reminds you to celebrate not only the heroes upon whose shoulders we stand today, but to honor the hero in you, the ever emerging Christ self, Christ essence of you, always drawing you higher into the light, always guiding you toward your greatest version of you, to honor the power of faith in you, to honor the power of life that transcends your physical body, that unites us each one to the other, one with the earth, one with the one, yet profoundly and wondrously unique and diverse expressions of the one. In 1970, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young released an album titled Deja Vu, one of my all-time favorites, Deja Vu, kind of like reincarnation. And in the song titled Almost Cut My Hair, David Crosby croons, I 
feel like letting my freak flag fly. <laughs> and I, I loved those words. And they became known as an urban expression of individuality and uniqueness and maybe just a tad rebelliousness. But the transfiguration story invites you to demonstrate that unique expression of light that you are. On the way down the mountain, Jesus told the disciples who had seen the transfiguration, tell the vision, tell the vision to no one until I have risen. Well, Christ has risen, and the Christ is risen in you as the individual expression of light. That transfiguration story is an invitation to bring that light to your everyday life, to be a star, to be the point of light unique to you in this now pivotal moment in the course of human evolution and the ongoing realization of our nation's vision of life, liberty, equality, and happiness. It is the Christ in us continually pulling us toward the light of wholeness and inviting you to let your Christ flag fly. Let your Christ flag fly today and every day. God bless. It must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face you were content to let me shine that's your way you always walked a step behind so i was the one with all the glory while you were the one with all the strength a beautiful face without a name for so long a beautiful smile to hide the pain did you ever know that you're my hero you're everything I I could be. I could fly higher than an eagle. For you are the wind beneath my wings. It might have appeared to go unnoticed. But I have got it all here in my heart. I want you to know I know the truth. Of course I know it. I would be nothing without you. Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I I can fly higher than an eagle, for you are the wind beneath my wings. Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything, everything I wish I could be.
Oh, Nancy. Wow. I think you are my musical hero today. Thank you for sharing your beautiful Christ light and waving your Christ flag for us this morning. I hope that all of you have been inspired by the music and the message today. And I invite you now into an opportunity to bless the Spiritual Life Center with your prayer intentions, your beautiful light energy, and if possible, your financial contributions. We very, very much appreciate your love offerings to support this ministry. And so whatever that is that you choose to share, I want you to take it into your mind and hearts and just hold that gift or that idea of that gift within you. And just allow your energy and your Christ flag to wave right through that gift, knowing that as you give, so you receive. And let us pray together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And so it is. And once again, we thank you for your financial support. And if you are donating something to the Spiritual Life Center today, there are three ways in which you can do that. Uh, you can uh, go to our website at www.slctroy.com forward slash give and use our secure server to make a credit card donation. Or you can mail a check or money order to our mailing address, which is 41340 Fox Run Road, number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. Or if you prefer, you can call Reverend Ron uh, with your credit card information at 248-925-6214. We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome any newcomers, anyone joining us here online for the very first time. And we'd like to invite you to join our email list so we can keep you informed of the uh, Sunday services and other events coming up at, unit, uh, at the Spiritual Life Center. And if you'd like to do that, you can go to our website, www.slctroy.com, and click on the link in the upper right-hand corner that says Join Email List. And as I said, that will help us to keep you updated, and it will also give us a chance to get to know you just a little bit better. If you have prayer requests this morning, I invite you to send those to Reverend Ron at ronaldfscott at gmail.com or give him a call at 248-925-6214. We will hold your prayer in consciousness and in the light for the next 30 days, and we will share that with our very powerful prayer team. And you may also, at any time of the day or night, 24-7, call Silent Unity's prayer line to have one of their uh, prayer representatives pray with you one-on-one -on -one at 1-800-NOW-PRAY. Our spiritual variety hour, our, the next one, will be on Wednesday, June 2nd at 7 p.m., and that will be a guided meditation. The email invitation with the Zoom, uh, the, Zoom link for the connection time following the meditation will go out in uh, Monday's email, but the guided meditation itself will be on YouTube right here on this channel. So we hope you'll take a break from your week and join us for that time of meditation. On June 12th at 12 noon at the Troy Firefighters Park, we hope you will join us for an all church picnic. We did this in September and it was a wonderful opportunity to see each other in person again. And now as things are beginning to open up, uh, we, we know that we will have uh, an even greater time. And I know that uh, Tony and Ray are going to provide music and we're very excited about that. So we hope you'll circle that on your calendar, June 12th. Uh, at 12 p.m. at the Troy Firefighters Park. And it will be a bring your own food kind of situation. We're still in that phase yet. So we invite you to do that. 
And now I invite you to, uh, after our service concludes, to join our Zoom connection time, which will begin immediately following the service on Zoom. And you should have received the link for that connection time in our weekly email and the email that went out yesterday as a reminder. So we look forward to seeing you there and seeing you here next week. And we thank you for joining today's service. Now let us join together in our peace song and benediction. As you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up Continents upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.